as we go through our sample exercises or our example exercises, you're going to want to have these two documents open. On the left side of the screen, I've got the notes file, uh, inferential statistics about two or more means. And on the right side of the screen, I've got the analysis homework one document, which has both the example exercises and the homework exercise that you'll do on your own after each demonstration. Um, now this video is going to use SPSS, so in SPSS we want to have both the anorexia file and the family file open, which you can see that I have both of those open down there. Now, uh, for these exercises use the anorexia data file. This data was collected during, during an experiment to compare two new treatment plans for anorexia, a behavioral treatment plan coded 1, and a family treatment plan, coded 2. To those patients receiving treatment from therapists who have not been trained in either of the new treatment plans. Uh, thus, they are expected to treat their patients using current best practice, and we're calling this the control group, which is coded as group 3. All patients with anorexia in this data file are receiving treatment though the control group is not receiving either of the new treatment plans under investigation. Now, in this exercise, the example exercise, we're going to investigate this situation. So before investigating the effectiveness of either treatment group, the researcher wants to know if the body weight of patients with anorexia changes while receiving treatment. We want to test the difference using the paired samples t-test which is also known as the dependent samples t-test or the related samples t-test. Um, but this is the test that analyzes the same measure taken with the same participants under two different conditions. In this case, it's the pre and the post. So in our data file, the pre is taken here and the post is taken here. The first thing we need to do is to write the research question and the null and alternate hypotheses. Now the research question is going to follow a format that implies the test. So in this case, we're looking to see if there's a difference. So we're, we're going to use uh, the research question one model here since we're looking for a difference after something has happened. I'll write my research question here. So the question I've written, is there a difference between the body weights of patients with anorexia after receiving treatment? If we're going to include null and alternate hypotheses, which in the case of uh, quantitative analyses um, is somewhat considered standard, then we should enter those symbolically. So to do this, we're going to use the equation editor. Now, I could copy and paste from the notes document, but I want to show you how to use the equation editor as we do this. So let me maximize this file. And under the insert menu, we're going to click on Insert Equation right here. Now you'll see that it gives us sort of a, a pop-up box here for the Equation Editor. And you'll also see that it adds the Equation Tools Design Toolbar to the, to the ribbon here. This first pull-down area is really useful in that it gives you quick access to symbols that are commonly used in mathematical equations. Um, now we can find symbols that are not in this pull-down um, and we'll be able to do that in a little bit uh, with some of our other um, exercises, but most everything we need is going to be right here. Then there's also uh, equation formatting options here. So, for example, if we need a fraction, there's four different ways to, to write a fraction. If we need to use scripts, superscripts, subscripts, or both, there's ways to do that. 
Here we can click radicals, and, and when you see this dotted line box here, that's a place that you get to enter more content, right? So what I'm going to do is my hypothesis, put a colon. Now, if I highlight the H and come to script, grab this subscript box, gives me a spot here to put the zero. So H0 is that the population mean before treatment is the same as the population mean after treatment. So if we come to our pull down, the population mean is mu. So we'll click that. And the mu before is for the null hypothesis equal to mu after. So we're going to want to add a script here as well, subscript that. So mu pre is equal to mu post. Now that is our null hypothesis. And we can actually copy that to save us time entering the alternate hypothesis. So the difference for the alternate hypothesis is that instead of H0, we put H1. And instead of equal, the alternate hypothesis is that they are not equal. And that symbol is in the quick access toolbar. So there's our research question and null and alternate hypothesis. Now I need to run the analysis and paste the output here into this document. So um, let me go over to the anorexia data file. Now all of the analyses related to group means are found under compare means uh, submenu. Um, we will be using the independent samples, the paired samples, and the one-way ANOVA, the bottom three items here on this menu. We're currently running the paired samples t-test, so I'll select that. Now this dialog box gives us a place to put in the pairs of variables. Now we want to compare pre and post, so we can put pre and post, just drag them over. Um, but what it's going to do is it's actually going to subtract variable two from variable one when it does the comparison. So um, if you have a pre and a post, uh, it seems counterintuitive, but always put the post first. The idea here is that if your treatment is designed to increase whatever's being measured and the participants uh, actually do raise in their values, if their values do increase, then you'll get a positive number when you set it up this way. If you flip them and put the pre as variable one, then uh, participants who did well on the treatment would have a negative number and participants who did poorly would have a positive number. And so the results are more easily interpretable if you enter the variables this way in backwards order. Now, for the t-test, the options button, there's nothing here that we need to, to mess with. We'll click OK, and it gives us this output. Now, uh, the, the way that we sort of read this output, the first box there gives us the um, descriptive statistics for the two measures. So we've got the mean, the n, the standard deviation for both the pre and the post. Um, the second box is going to report the correlation between the two measures, um, which, which is fine. We're not actually going to use that, but um, of course the pre and the post are significantly correlated with one another. That's sort of expected. Uh, and then the final box gives us the 
the t-test statistics that we're going to want to report. Um, so the t-value, the degrees of freedom, and the significance are given there. So now that I've got my output here, I want to go ahead and paste this into my Word document. Now I could highlight it and paste it as a table, and I'd be able to edit that in Word, but then it becomes very weird to sort of uh, uh, make it fit and, and fiddle with the formatting and all of that. So if you've got a Windows machine, then the snipping tool, which if you aren't familiar with the snipping tool and don't know where to find it, like I have mine pinned to the taskbar because I use it all the time, but if you don't already have that, you can click in the little search bar and just type snip, and it's certain to come up. But if you use the snip, snipping tool and click new, it gives us the opportunity to sort of draw a box around the stuff we want, and it takes a picture of it. Sweet. Now I can control C, copy. And control V, paste. Now notice that it shrinks it down so that it fits on the page because our bottom table was much wider and it would have flowed right over. So now I can see everything and that's helpful. Now the next thing that I need to do is write up my findings in APA style and I've given you some boilerplate text that you can use both if the differences are not significant uh, and if the differences are significant. Double click that to make it fit better. All right. So, in the example for not significant, there's no difference between the number of tissues that participants use when watching Deborah Winger die in the movie Terms of Endearment and the number used when watching the same actress die in The Shadowlands. So, what you'll notice here is that there's some statistical test text sort of embedded in the um, sentences, and this is the standard way to embed your statistical output into a written sentence. All right, so when I write this up, I'll write that All right, so I've written, on average, the body weight of patients with anorexia was different after treatment than it was before. And I've created a spot there to put my uh, descriptives and my statistical text. So I need to go ahead and put the uh, mean and standard deviation um, after treatment. So that's this first one here. So I'll do control I to put it in italics, M for mean, uh, control I to take italics off. Then if you do control shift space, that will insert a non-breaking space equals control shift space. And now we'll enter the post-treatment mean, which is 85.2, italicized standard deviation equals, uh, and the standard deviation there is 8.03, no, 04, 8.04. Now, as a general rule of thumb, uh, when you report a mean and standard deviation, you usually want to report only the precision that makes sense. 
Um, SPSS likes to report as many decimal places as humanly possible, but um, it seems to only make sense to do one decimal place here for the mean, um, and then when you report the standard deviation, you can either use the same level of precision, so I could report 8.0, or you can report one additional decimal place. Uh, I've chosen to do that here, and I've got 8.04. All right, so it was different after treatment than before. So here I'll put... Mean equals 82.4, standard deviation of 5.18. Okay. And now I report the T test statistic. Um, I can go ahead and just copy this. and paste it with merging formatting. There we go. So the T value is reported here. So T is 2.94. It only makes sense to report two decimal places for a T test. The degree of freedom there. So T with 71 degrees of freedom. And the p-value is equal to 0 0.004. Now, if your output ever says 0 0.000 here, it's a lie. Your p-value is not actually equal to 0 0.00, which is why uh, you would write it this way instead as p less than 0 0.001. This one is, in fact, equal to a number that I can type. So I'll change the less than sign to an equal sign and the 1 to a 4. Now, the next step is to calculate the effect size. Now, here in the notes, it tells us how to calculate the effect size. Um, and as a test of mean differences, Cohen's d makes the most sense, although there is a way to calculate uh, an R value as well. But we'll go ahead and use Cohen's D. Um, Cohen's D is going to use the mean difference and the standard deviation of the mean difference. So it's this number divided by that number. Now, the great part is that's easy to calculate, but you can also use the Lavery's effect size calculator uh, that I've made available to you in, um, in Canvas. So if you were to enter the pre and post as group one and two, um, it would calculate the same d-value as if we used the mean and standard deviation of the, the mean difference here um, in the output. So I'm actually I'll go ahead and enter that so the the post was 85.2 Standard deviation, 8.04, with 72 participants. And the pre was 82.4, with a standard deviation of 5.18, and 72 participants. So the D value is 0.41, which if we look at the interpretation guidelines here, which come from the Cohen's article, uh, the Cohen article that you just read, 
uh, 0.4 falls between a small and medium effect. It has not crossed medium, but it's closer to medium than it is small. So we would usually use the phrase small to medium effect so as not to overstate the effect size. So if we go back to that boilerplate text, we'll use this here. The observed mean difference was 2.76 with a 95% confidence interval of on the lower end 0 0.89 and on the upper end 4.76. which is not a very large effect. It is a small to medium effect. And our D value was 0 0.41. And it's got the Cohen citation in there as well for the interpretation of the effect size. So that is, from beginning to end, the paired sample t-test. Go ahead and give the homework exercise a shot.